All right, I think I'm live. Welcome everybody to my Q&A live stream slash Stinger assembly build. So I got this little setup here. I got my light, got my webcam and my Sony camera over here. And I'm gonna be putting some stingers together and doing a little Q&A. So just testing the audio here to make sure it sounds okay. I'm also testing this lav mic that I just got. Um, so let me know if it sounds okay. Uh, this was inspired by Adam Savage's uh, tested live builds, so I thought, you know, that, that seems like a lot of fun, and uh, I have some things that I've been needing to do, so why not combine a Q&A with it? So um, I have a bunch of parts here. These are all, um, these are male plugs and female plugs, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attaching them to this bare cable. So basically I'm just gonna cut them down and then attach them to the live wire, the hot wire, cold wire, and the ground, or the positive, negative ground, uh, however you call it, whatever you call it. Um, some people are saying audio is a little bit low. Let me see if I could adjust it. I actually don't know if I can adjust it. My assistant says to just speak louder. Okay, so I got how to win is here in Kimmy Che. What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to my to my uh, spontaneous live stream. Um, yeah. So basically, I'm just gonna. I guess I'm just gonna start. I don't have all the tools here yet. Hold on. Let's see. I need a screwdriver. Let's see, is this too small? It's a little, I think this will be fine. This will be fine. All right. So you guys are joining me. I've just finished dinner. I had some steamed salmon, um, some cucumbers. Oh, I should probably be doing this like over here. Um, yeah, basically these are very very simple to to put together. Um, and if you guys are not from the states, these plugs might look a little different from you. Okay, this is too small. <clears throat> okay. But yeah. If you're from North America, if you're from North America, you'll see these plugs everywhere. Um, these are 15 amp plugs. Most most places now have 20 amp outlets, um, but um, for 20 amp plugs like these, you might have like um, the sideways one, like for your washer dryer. Um, but these are. 15 amp, and the cable that I'm using is SJ OOW cable, essentially, and uh, it's also 12 gauge. So there are these like thick outdoor rated cables, um, and all these plugs are also like water resistant. There's a little bit of rubber insulation in there. Um, but yeah, you can buy these in um, any like film store. B&H sells these, Film Tools sells these. But it is a little bit cheaper if you make them yourself. So I've made a few in the past for myself. I've made some for friends. I've sold some to friends. Um, usually I like to wait until like the cable goes on sale. So like certain times of the year, these parts will go on sale because they'll be like just a lot. Um, manufactured I guess um, but then so you got to be careful if you're making some yourself um, just wait for the prices to drop um, but yeah so I have quite a few that I'm gonna be making I think I'm gonna be making one two seven eight nine 
I'm going to be making around like nine of these right now. So I'm only going to be streaming for about an hour. Um, so if you guys have any questions, comments, if you guys want to talk about stuff, we can chat. I see uh, Kimmy's from New York City. Hope you guys are doing okay in New York. Um, I know it's a lot different than here in LA since you guys are in a more like enclosed space or more population dense space. So hopefully you guys are, are staying well there and um, things aren't getting too crazy. It's been quite an insane week, month, couple of months. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of trying to find ways to keep myself busy, keep my brain occupied. I should be doing this up here. Uh, I'm like doing it in my lap. Uh, so basically I'm just loosening up these parts so I can uh, get the cable in there. And then I'll be attaching the ground here, green for ground, white to silver, and black to gold. Okay, so it's all very self-explanatory. <clears throat> so these, this cable, I have tied a different way because I was saving this cable for something. I think I was saving this particular cable for dimmers. So let's see. Where was the beginning? Okay, yeah, so this is for dimmer. So I'm going to be cutting this down later. So standard length of cable is 25 feet and 50 feet. Um, those are the most common cable lengths that you'll find at rental houses. Uh, and the reason we use these special cables is... Um, you know, a lot of like film and TV lights, equipment, generators and whatnot, you know, they use a lot of power and they need to ca carry that power um, efficiently a long distance. So um, the normal like orange wires that you guys get from like Home Depot or even like the, the white like extension cables, um, they're not as reliable as these guys. So like if you're running carts over, driving over, um, these are just way more robust, um, and you can you can use these outdoors. So like you can, um, you know, use them to power things outside, and they'll carry because the the wire is so thick. It'll carry um, the entire current all the way across. Because um, if the cable is too long or too thin, you'll have what's called line line loss. So like um, after a certain amount of cable, like Usually they say about 150 feet, um, your lights will start um, dropping power. Um, so like if you have a 2K light or a 1K light and you have like 300 feet of cable, it's not going to give you the full uh, 100K worth of wattage, right? Um, so yeah, so then like a lot of times when you're running cable a long way, you'll have like... Uh, gang boxes or, or, or lunch boxes that'll help uh, get the power to where it needs to go and, and the full amount of power. Um, Immortal Hawk, hello. Hello there. And wait, what? Hello. Welcome. So thanks. If you guys saw my Instagram post, uh, I was debating streaming on Twitch or YouTube, and most people have voted YouTube. Um, so I think I'm going to like try to stream more but when I do these like more talking ones it'll be on YouTube and for gaming ones I'll do on Twitch so if you guys want to see me and my fiance Jessica play some video games um, we will be doing so on Twitch and as I kind of get things organized I'll, I'll try to have like a more regular schedule because I do like having a schedule um, So Kimmy asks, how how did you learn or get interested in electrical work? Um, hmm, that's a good question. This is probably the extent of the electrical work that I actually know, um, because it's very easy, right? It's just um, positive, negative, and a ground. 
So as long as you, you can kind of keep track of where your electric's going, you'll be generally safe. Um, if you guys have been following my YouTube channel, I made these um, like wardrobe mirrors, at least like these vanity mirrors, and I learned how to like wire the light bulbs and, and wire the plugs. Um, and that's kind of where, where it all started. And, I, you know, I just watched like YouTube tutorials on, on how to do this. So um, a lot of information online to, to figure out how to do this stuff. Um, so let me, let's see. I have all the cable on the ground here because it's kind of heavy. So I guess I'll just um, just start. Um, Mirabelle asks, can we visit your island? Uh, yes. Um, actually, we just recorded a video yesterday uh, for our Patreon, our Patreon members. Uh, we've been exploring like gaming content for Wong Fu on Patreon. Uh, and, um, we just did like a little island tour of my island, uh, Jessica Lynn's island, and Jen's island. Sorry if you can, if you're hearing me burp, I just had dinner, sorry. Um, so, uh, that video will be on Patreon, and then eventually, um, I'll be streaming more on Twitch, so that's where the gaming content will be. Okay, so basically, I just want to take off a little bit, like an inch and a half, and then that will reveal the individual wires here. And uh, that, that has this like kind of cardboard insulation. So another reason why there's like line loss when you're when you're um, transferring power, like after a certain amount of time, is you know uh, cables heat up. So as the power travels through. You know, rules of thermodynamics or whatever means that some of the energy is lost in just heat. So that's what this insulation helps with. So first I want to just get rid of that extra insulation that's hanging off. And then I'm going to um, open up these cables. So it's actually easier if I put this on first. So that way these aren't all everywhere. Cool. <clears throat> so Moral Hawk asks, uh, what have I been doing during quarantine? Um, it hasn't been too different in terms of workload. Like we're trying to, trying to stay active with lunch break. Um, with We're trying to stay active at Wong Fu by doing lunch breaks uh, every week. So we're trying to keep up with that. Um, and then if you can see my cutters here, I'm just going to go with a 12 gauge slot because these are, this is 12 gauge wire. Um, so there's that. Um, and then, yeah, just been kind of focusing on, on, you know, myself and, um, trying to, keep my mind active, keep my body active. So we've been uh, going on walks, spend a lot of time with the dogs. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more space. I also wanna be careful not to make a mess because um, every time you cut these, a little bit of the, uh, the copper wire gets like cut off if you see. So I don't want that getting on the floor. Um, you gotta be careful. Crumbs Everywhere uh, is asking, how has the wedding planning been going? Have you been able to plan or has quarantine put a dent in it? Um, quarantine luckily hasn't been putting too big of a dent in the planning process. I think the main thing is like we we had our um, taste testing scheduled. Uh, I need to sit a little closer. We had our taste testing that had to be postponed. Um, so like right before we were able to we did get a venue and we were able to lock in a date. So it was all kind of coming together. And um, now we're at the phase where we picked the menu. So hopefully, um, I know a lot of weddings this year have been canceled. So hopefully, um, you know, those those weddings can get, can get their um, dates or not their dates, but um, any weddings that are still kind of in limbo, hopefully they can have them. Um, 
but ours we're planning for December, so we ha we have some time. Um, I know that there's like restrictions on um, crowd sizes and whatnot, so uh, fingers crossed that we'll be able to have all of our guests and you know all of our friends and family. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just uh, loosening these up so I can get the cable in. Uh, Steven asks, can you speak a little bit of Chu Chu or Chu Chao? Uh, I don't. I can't speak Chu Chao. I've, um, I've told this, uh, this story a few times, uh, like on lunch break and whatnot, like learning Chinese. Um, it wasn't explained to me very well that like there's different dialects of like Chinese as I was growing up. Like I knew what that meant, but then it's like, okay, how do I know which dialect somebody is speaking at the time? Um, so it's so like I can actually speak, have a conversation with somebody without like mixing three different dialects together. So like um, my parents, speak Vietnamese, they speak Cantonese, Mandarin, and Chu Chao is like my family dialect. So I grew up hearing my my grandparents spoke mainly Chu Chao, but they also spoke Vietnamese um, with their friends. So like I would hear those two mixed up a lot. Uh, but then like when I have some Vietnamese um, relatives and so then they would only be able to speak Vietnamese, right? So then it would be like, oh, it's a little bit different. Like, they're not saying this when they mean this. Uh, and then I went to Chinese school, and we were trying to learn Mandarin. And it was it was a mess. So I, I, I kind of, like, did not enjoy speaking any, like, Chinese or Vietnamese for a long time because... Um, you know, it's not a good feeling when you're a kid and like you say something and then it's like wrong. It's like it's kind of embarrassing, you know. So like I, I never really picked it up. But now it's kind of it's kind of sad and unfortunate that um, I, I'm not able to carry on that legacy. I guess. Um, Crumbs everywhere is asking. Do you think you'll do any wedding planning vlogs and maybe release a wedding video afterwards? Um, there will be videographers at the wedding. I don't know how public I'm going to be about, um, like, vlogging the process. Um, these past couple years has been kind of kind of rough, like, just mentally getting into the right headspace to, to want to vlog. Um, and even, like, just doing this live stream. I think being, being public-facing on, like, Wong Fu... Um, and also just being just an introverted person usually has like dissuaded me from wanting to do more vlogs or like, you know, those doubts are always there. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think like the, this quarantine is doing good. Cause like I, I'm get redeveloping my my love for for creating content and um making stuff that i want to make and not worrying so much about like what others want me to make or um what other people are doing you know being being in this environment of like being surrounded by influencers like every day right uh, and working with them directly even even like celebrities to some extent and then you know being somebody that's like normally behind the camera but also wanting to like have a voice too. I think it's 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 been a struggle, and I think um, I want to get to a point, and I, and I'm getting there of like just um, supporting first, and like being being happy, and and, um, and like proud of like my friends that are making content, right? So I think I think a lot of what doesn't get talked about is how just competitive the, this industry is, um, and social media does nothing to really help that. You know, everything is just like a uh, a contest you know everything's a competition and I, I didn't like that feeling so um, even when I feel like I'm like competing with myself right if it's like um, like vlogmas or something um, so trying to get through that and, and analyze those feelings um, so that I don't feel like creating content is a burden right 
So that's why this like live stream is is uh, so rewarding. If you notice, I'm sweating because it's freaking hot in here. Uh, maybe I should turn on a fan. Will that be okay? I've got a fan right in front of me. Let me know if this fan is like loud for this mic. Um, anyway, does that does that make sense? Uh, so like doing this live stream and not being like 100% in the live stream because I have like this task that I'm doing. Um, it's helpful. Let's see. Oh, it's like the kiss, kill, or marry game. If you have to choose which guest to invite to the wedding. Um, yeah, the invitation list. So, you know, every every person you invite is an extra like, you know, however much to your budget. And also, um, you know, the thing about weddings too is like once you have the venue, your guest list is capped at that, whatever that capacity is. So um, then you don't feel as guilty, you know. Hopefully this stuff doesn't blow towards me. Maybe I can use something to like block the wind. Okay, just put it a little bit higher and a little bit further back so it doesn't blow all this stuff at me. <clears throat> Would you ever take language lessons to learn Mandarin or maybe another language? Hmm. You know, I've actually been wanting to learn sign language. Um, the thing about Mandarin and growing up speaking English is that they're, they're just so different, right? Like it, like Mandarin is just strictly a, from what I understand, it's strictly a memory-based language. So if you don't know how to say something, you're just not going to be able to say it, right? Without without just making up a random word but because English is like structured in a way where um, you can kind of put words together to make them make sense if that makes sense like you can you can still get by with with having a basic understanding of English but Mandarin is just like it's it's a whole other level right um, but, um, but yeah I'd be interested in learning like sign language because um, I think it's just like that's it's a whole population of people that doesn't really get to to interact with like 99% of the world, right? Uh, so, and also just in case I were to lose my hearing for whatever reason, then sign language would be a plus. Bruce Lowe says, do some BJJ videos. Um, yes, I want to do... I actually just simply want to compete um, in jiu-jitsu. Uh, right before this happened, I like, slowly started to transition back to, to training again. And then uh, the gym I was going to is actually um, moving to a new location. So a couple of things happened. Old gym shut down. New gym was under construction. Then quarantine hit, um, and then now I am sitting at home making stingers. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, I'm trying to keep active. I'm trying to jog. I'm trying to um, do like body weight exercises, uh, and then hopefully we can, I can start training again and then compete, and um, and then hopefully I can. Make some blogs. I say a lot. I say hopefully a lot. I have a lot of hope. Um, yeah, all these little projects I've had kind of piled up, and um, now I'm finally getting around to putting these together. Yep, I did it again. See, I'm supposed to stick this part through first because it gets kind of tricky to stick these through. Can see. 
Okay. There we go. So green is ground. Natalie, hi Natalie. Wrap for us. Yi Yang says wrap for us. If I I just watched that episode of Avatar, The Last Airbender, um, last night where he's doing like the haiku raps. I thought, man, that was really clever. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Because uh, first I need a beat, and I don't have a beat right now, so I can't, sorry. JQ asks, how are the puppies doing during the quarantine? Do you think they'll have separation anxiety when you and your fiancé go back to work? Um, they've been doing surprisingly well. Um, they're definitely enjoying the mommy and daddy time for sure. Um, they're enjoying it 100%. Uh, they get to go outside way more than usually. Um, but we're trying to um, be mindful of that too. Like when we go out, we're not we're not going out like for long durations of time. So like when we go out to get groceries or whatever, just to kind of like make sure they're they're still used to us coming and going because we do worry about that um, and we don't we don't leave them alone longer than like six six hours normally it's very rare that we'll leave them alone for like a whole day like eight hours or so um, that's probably the longest we'll we'll leave them alone if at any point it's longer than that then um, we'll have them babysat puppy sat but um, right now because Jessica is an esthetician her returning back to work is gonna be a lot later than than me so we're actually gonna be starting to go back to the office next week and slowly transitioning back um, but the salon and spa industry it's gonna take some time so she will have some some alone time with the girls to kind of help ease them back into you know, at least me being gone for a little bit. And then she will see and go back to work. This one is trickier for some reason. Okay. All right. All right, got it. Oh, come on. Ben Lin says, hello, hello, Ben Lin. Lin is actually my middle name, so I am also Ben Lin. Benson Lin. So that's the mail end that's attached. If you guys can see that. And then now I just gotta put this guy in place. And they have this little slot that aligns it. So these are actually very easy, easy to do. You know, as long as you're you're making sure your wires are going to the right spot, you'll be fine. See, so yeah, I cut this a little bit too much on this male end. They're a little bit longer, so I'll just kind of shove it in a little bit more so they don't come out. Okay. Alrighty, I think that's it. Cool, and that is a completed 25 foot stinger. Okay, 
making sure I have one male and one female end. If I had two male ends, that's called a snake bite, I think. I think that's called a snake bite. Snake bite, and those are extremely dangerous and should never be made. Uh, and then two female ends would be useless, right? Because um, power should always be going in one direction, right? So in order to double check my work, I think I have one of these checkers here. Do I have it in here? Okay, it might be in my other bag. Okay, yeah, it's in my other bag. Is it? Oh, wait, no, I have it. So I have this checker here, and this will help me check my work. Okay. What's a stinger? I just got here. Oh, never mind. Stingers is like a, a term for extension cords. Um, these are for the film and television industry because um, these are a lot more heavy duty than your normal like orange one from Home Depot, or whatever. Um, you got these heavy duty and water resistant ends here. This cable is outdoor rated. It's very thick. It can carry a lot of current through without having it drop off and, and lose it due to heat and whatnot. Uh, let's see if I got some room to plug into. Okay, so I actually got a plug right up here. And I got a phone vibrating. What is going on? Sorry guys, I have some messages. Oh, it's notifications. Um, yeah, we just released uh, a new mug on the Wong Fu store. Uh, it's a limited edition mug. That's what I'm getting notified about. Um, and uh, we, we were, you know, thinking for a long time about how to, you know, keep ourselves active uh, at Wong Fu. And a lot of our, like, commercial projects or branded projects were halted. Um, let me just put this in. Okay. So, if you guys have ever seen one of these, this is going to check if my wiring is correct. So, it, if, if it is correct, I'll get these two lights. See that right there? I'll get these two lights to light up. So, I was fingers crossed that they're correct. And I don't shock myself. We did it. We did it. See? Correct. So... This stinger is officially safe for work, <laughs> safe for use. Okay. This is a 25 footer. This is gonna go to my good friend, Alan Chung. It's gonna go to Alan tomorrow. I'll see him tomorrow at a six foot distance. But yeah, so back to what I was saying about the Wong Fu store. So, um, you know, a lot of people ha are, a lot of content creators are, like, relying on merch to help keep them afloat right now. Um, a lot of people are making masks and whatnot, and um, we, we wanted to do something unique and, and something special, and that's why we went with, like, the mug idea, um, just because it's, like, something that will last, you know, essentially forever, and then putting some artwork on it and putting our faces on it. And the inspiration came from we've been doing these weekly Zoom meetings to, you know, update each other and, and keep the work work happening. So we're like, hmm, let's, what if we were like cartoon faces? And uh, we have become quick fans of Nicole Santos's work, uh, Taylor's girlfriend, um, on her. Instagram page, and uh, we thought that's like such a cute aesthetic that she's got, and seeing her draw like Taylor and stuff, and we're like, oh, we want to see how you would draw the rest of us. So she came through and did the designs for us, and um, and I think she did an amazing job. So if you guys are looking for ways to support, uh, you know, there's always Patreon. But I, I know that's kind of a big commitment for people because it is monthly. And right now is actually not a good time to 
join Patreon if you haven't because they charge you like every month. So if you, since it's like the end of a month, I would wait until June 1st to start. So that way you're not double billed for like just an extra two days. So, um, but Patreon is, is a great way to support Wong Fu, especially right now. We're doing a lot of like exclusive content for Patreon. Um, every month or every quarter we have like a uh, discount code for the store. We have exclusive videos that we do. So some gaming videos that we've done is on Patreon. We do live streams on Patreon. We do in-person hangouts. Well, we did do in-person hangouts, so I'm not sure when that will be allowed to happen again. But yeah, we used to travel a lot to like colleges and to cities to, to do public speaking events, and then we would do um, in-person hangouts for our Patreon members. And then another way to support is just by simply watching our videos and, and sharing them. Um, out of revenue, it's not it's not a lot. You know, it's a, it's a pretty small percentage. Um, we're not like David Dobrik or or like a Casey Neistat that get just millions of views on on other videos. Um, so ad, ad revenue actually isn't isn't that much for us. But you know, just sharing, sharing and watching, watching without ad blocker. Is um is is the easiest way to support real and just you know sharing sharing the videos. After that, our store, wongfustore.com. All of the merch is designed for the most part in-house. Uh, it's it's manufactured um, with the help of some local companies, and that's actually where uh, we're still in contact with Ted. So Ted's still involved in the Wong Fu store, if you guys remember Ted, he manages a company called Giant Hugs, and they are our online store, like, people. Okay, let's see. Being a silver patron has been Nothing but fun. It's great. Silver patrons. Silver. The silver tier is is one of the funnest tiers because like they get a little mix of everything. Um, oh yeah, we did like we we did a picnic. When was our picnic? It was in February. We did a picnic this this year. That was really fun. Met a lot of people out at the picnic. Um, It was our two-year anniversary picnic. Saw a lot of people from like all over from, I think some some East Coast people. I, I don't remember if there was Canada people. There might have been some Canada people there, but that was fun. There was like 40 people that came out. You guys got to see my, my puppies. So yeah, Patreon is a great way to support. And then also, you know, whenever we have like an exclusive release of like our series, uh, we don't have anything lined up now. But um, you know, when we had um, Danny after college or Yappy, those are really great ways to support. That all went, you know, directly back to the cost of production. So we didn't have like big studio support for for Yappy or you know Danny after college. Uh, we did that all in house. So. Spent all our own money and got the support of, of course, Patreon and you know friends and and local businesses that helped out, like donate locations and whatnot. But um, in terms of profit, it like it. Uh, I guess you can say it broke even. I mean, but like. Where was I going with that? Ways to support. Yeah, following following all of our, our channels. Wong Fu Pro, more Wong Fu. Uh, all of our individual channels as well. 
Um, I know Phil's been doing videos on his personal channel, and he also has a Bopo Mofo channel. Um, Wes has his own channel. I think he's been kind of debating whether or not to make his own content. I know he's been itching too. Um, we're all on Instagram, TikTok. I don't think anybody's really on Snapchat anymore. I was never really on Snapchat. I don't think I ever even posted anything on Snapchat. But uh, for TikTok, I just posted my little wipe it down challenge, if you guys saw that. Let's see. Do you think creating a Patreon page for smaller creators would be worth it? Um, you know, it doesn't hurt. Um, the main the main thing about Patreon, it's 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 always going to be reliant on the audience that you have. So like building your audience is going to be the main thing. I think sometimes small creators get caught up with um, the idea of like how to get more patrons, but I think that just is um, the first thing you should think is just how to build an audience, uh, and that and that's just simply through consistency and and making content that they want to see. I keep doing this like in my lap so where you can't see. I wonder if I can move it over a little bit. Okay, here we go. But yeah, so um, if you're if you're just like if your focus is to get more patrons at an early stage, then it's gonna be a very slow process. But it is very, it's a very valuable tool, and I think it, it's definitely one of the best platforms to because so many people use page, Patreon, so um, people that are on Patreon, uh, since they already support you know, at least one person on Patreon, they're, they're more likely to support others through Patreon since they already have an account. You know? So I know like YouTube's got some donation tools, and Twitch has some donation tools or something like that. But uh, building an audience should be the focus, you know. Um, and having having like Patreon as maybe like a, just like a, a little landing page for them to direct to is always good. Just, just so there's avenues, you know. And then as you start to build, you can like direct people there uh, more frequent, frequently. The thing with Patreon too is you also got to remember that uh, it's like an ongoing Indiegogo or Kickstarter. You got to offer perks. So I think uh, making sure that even the perks are within your realm of um, capabilities, right? You don't want to overpromise things that end up like costing you more, right? Like if the perks are more expensive or they take more time than just the normal content that you produce so there's a there's a balance there's um you got to have your like public audience and then your your patreon audience and, and knowing how much to give to, to all parties because then if you're only giving to your patreon then you you don't you're not really developing your audience outside of that so you're only kind of like um working with your existing client base, essentially. Um, so you want to make sure that you're covering all your bases. It's a lot easier said than done. So I've definitely been a part of some projects, um, like Indiegogo projects that seem like kind of ongoing or, or Kickstarter, and then that ends up being like taking more time than the thing you were uh, like raising money for. Um, so like say like you wanted to make a, a movie or something, and then you need like a certain amount of time to produce the movie, edit the movie, distribute the movie. But then, say you have like too many perks, then you're spending all your time 
fulfilling the perks and not working on the thing that you raise the money for, and then all the money goes to the perks. So, yeah, it's definitely a balance, and it's definitely something that you should plan, 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 plan ahead for. Um, one of those ongoing projects is actually uh, a project I'm doing with uh, Brandon Suhu. It's called Chino to Go. Um, it's a project that we started like over two years ago, and we did a kick, uh, Kickstarter last year uh, to help kind of get us through the rest of production. And unfortunately, you know, COVID hit right when we were kind of about to start fulfilling some of these perks and um, and and trying to reshoot some some scenes as well. And um, we've actually had to put a halt to that and kind of rethink what the show is going to be because we were trying to make um, like a food and travel show, but because that's not really allowed, we got to kind of take it in another direction. And I, and I had another friend that actually had a similar uh, show that had to get put on, or similar pilot that had to get put on pause. So it, it kind of sucked to see like a lot of those kind of passion projects get halted. Um, but we're going to try to make some announcements soon if you guys have been following the progress on that. Um, Brandon Suhu has been really active on TikTok. And he's actually doing quite well on TikTok. Alrighty, that's number two done. Okay, so this one is going to go to my colleague Isaiah. He's a camera assistant, aspiring DP. Should check this one as well. Hang on. Always check your work, everybody. Especially electrical work. I mean, it's very important that you get you get these right because these are um, essentially like if you have a bad stinger, that could ruin your equipment, right? anything it's plugged into so let's hope this is correct and there it is it's correct so yeah, if you have crossed wires or something that could make something do things it's not supposed to do catch fire explode I don't know so I would hate to have one of my stingers cause damage you know you could have like a $2,000 light and have it short or something, and that won't be good. Dino, what's up, Dino? Dino, Dino, or is it Dino Dan? Dino, Dino. Oh man, it's 50 minutes and I'm only made two. And I have like five more to go. All right. I'm gonna do a speed round. No, never rush. Not especially with electrical. Don't rush. So I'm not cutting all the way through. I just want the black um, outer sleeve off. Okay. 
cutting off the insulation. Ah, oh, I did it again. Gotta keep. I have like more than almost two thirds of the screen dedicated to this camera that I'm not even really using. I think it's just kind of awkward to like hold my hands out like this. Opening up these. So I always like to start with the female end because, you know, ladies first. Cut off the insulation. and all these. You guys are getting a close look at my my terrible dexterity. All right. What other hobbies or projects would you like to learn or start? You know, I actually have quite a few hobbies um, already that I've neglected. So, like, you know. Woodworking is one that I've been w wanting to develop more. Um, once I'm done with these stingers, I'm going to be making apple boxes again. Um, before, you know, it gets super hot in the summer. Um, so I have some, some friends that have requested some apple boxes. So I thought I'd make an, a new batch of those and kind of refine the process and, and make it more efficient. Um, now that I have all the tools. So before I was doing a lot of like measuring and stuff by hand and cutting by hand because I didn't have certain tools and, and just making that process more efficient. Uh, but I, I don't plan to like make a whole bunch and make that up because it is pretty exhausting work. Even this, like using my hands like this, like my hands are going to be sore tomorrow for sure. Uh, and then making the apple boxes because you know those those panels are very big. They're like four foot by eight foot, and they're very heavy. So working with those, cutting them down. But you know that's that's a hobby I enjoy, like wood woodworking. It's, it's something that you know I've developed later in my or in my adulthood, I guess. Uh, didn't really grow up doing that kind of stuff. But it's nice. It's relaxing. So there's that female end. That's one hobby. Um, another hobby is I was talking about this earlier, but jujitsu. Trying to get back into that. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to have direct contact with people. So sparring is kind of out of the question right now. Uh, training's kind of out of the question. Crumbs, I don't think you ever asked, answered my last question. What was your last question? 
Oh, yeah. Sorry, I kind of blended in there. Um, I know a lot of people in the salon industry lost your job. Is your fiance doing okay? Um, she's doing well. It, it's definitely been pretty, pretty stressful and, and emotional time. Um, she was laid off um, and because, you know, they had to close down. And uh, luckily, she was able to get unemployment. Um, and um, her, I guess, salon, she does lash extensions and... Um, her salon was able to, to secure some of those um, small business loans. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is like none of these places really, or nobody really knows how long this is going to go for, you know, is it going to be a month, two months, three months? And if you think about it, you know, how many just like individuals have the, the recommended three months of savings, right? Everybody says have three months uh, worth of savings in your bank. For emergencies and I mean to have that and to have that for your business and it's like so many people so many businesses are, are month to month and um, luckily they were able to secure some of those assistant loans so um, they should fingers crossed you know I don't want to jinx it but uh, hopefully she can continue working there um, but yeah, she's been she's been uh, picking up a lot of different hobbies. She's been knitting, sewing, um, hanging out with the girls, doing a lot of cooking at home. Um, she's been killing it on Zelda, Breath of the Wild. She like accidentally deleted her game and had to start all over. Animal Crossing, she was really into that for a while. But yeah. So one of the good things is like having some time to kind of relax, reset the mind, focus on what's important. Uh, no worries about the questions. This is uh, this is keeping things engaging. This is a Q and A, so the more questions, the better. I'm almost at an hour, but this is kind of fun. This is relaxing, isn't it? So other hobbies, you know, jujitsu. I, I I did. Um, I was playing a little bit of paintball. I used to play paintball a lot. I started getting back into it like a couple years ago, uh, but it was just—it's just a little bit too expensive, and it, it's hard to to keep up because the the park I go to is in San Diego, um, so it's quite a drive to to play paintball. Even even the closest park here is a little bit far. It's about like an hour and a half away, an hour away. So it's like it's a whole commitment to 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 play. But the park that I, uh, my home field is, is Velocity Paintball. It's in Ramona. They've actually started to, to reopen. Since paintball is technically, it's, you know, it's not a co contact sport or anything. Um, so, like, as long as you're maintaining your, your distance, it, it, it's still relatively safe. Even the sport itself, it's like, it's, it's actually, despite, you know, being shot at with flying balls of paint, it's actually a pretty safe sport. Um wearing all the protective equipment and whatnot. And it hurts a little bit, but, you know, the adrenaline's there to help mask the pain. So I do suggest, I do recommend people trying at least once. It's it's really like a real-life video game. And, and that's that's actually why I don't really play too many, like, first-person shooters or whatever, because, like, I got to experience that, like, in real life, like, through paintball. I know a lot of people, you know, play, like, Airsoft, too. So those are... They're like real-life video games. It's fun. You should try it. Just making sure these are nice and tight. What 
other hobbies. Um, if you guys saw on Instagram and TikTok, I recently uh, trained with Noah Flader and Brandon Suhu. So like doing some other kind of martial arts uh, besides jujitsu. So doing some striking. I, I want to work on like my boxing and, and my kicks. Um, just because it's fun. It's fun to like hit pads. It's fun to, to, to punch things and kick things. I want to develop those skills. Okay, so that's... Read any good books lately or watch any good movies or shows? You laughing at me? She's, she's laughing at me because she thinks I can't read, which is true, okay? <laughs> I don't read. I, um, I'm i not a big reader. Uh, I've, never, I've never really been a, been a big reader. Um, but we have been binge-watching Avatar, The Last Airbender. And this is actually the first time I'm, I'm watching Avatar, The Last Airbender. I didn't really grow up watching it. It was a little bit, um, like, after my cartoon phase but I'm, I'm really liking the show uh I, I will admit like when avatar first came out i was like kind of like what the heck like i was st kind of starting to understand what like cultural appropriation was and i thought like at the time it was the case of that because like you know every, like asians were very prideful about like anime and stuff and like okay there's this like kind of this anime created by americans or like you know, non-Asians, and it's very stylized Asian, and I was like, huh, this is, this is odd, like, it, it, it was a weird time, uh, let me just show you guys, oh, there we go, two lights, perfect, number three done, so like, you know, being big in martial arts, being like, very, oh, sorry, like, Asian pride, I thought Avatar was like, like, I didn't think I was allowed to like the show, so I, I avoided it, you know. Um, like, there was so much about, like, even back then, it was like, you know, dubbed versus subs, and like, you know, Dragon Ball, Naruto, all that. Uh, I didn't watch Naruto either. Like, so, yeah, I didn't grow up watching Avatar, and now I feel like I missed out on a lot, because it actually is a really good show. And then, you know, Dante Bosco is in it. And now he's like, you know, I've met him a few times through Wong Fu, so that's been really cool. Um, and even the martial arts, it's like, it's all legit. It's like, yes, in a way it is uh, appropriation because, like, it's an American show, but it's like, it's, I can admit, um, you know, I was I was wrong in a sense because they, they do a really good job. They pay a lot of respects, and, and none of it is like, none of the characters are, are caricatures or... or like uniquely Asian stereotypes. Like, yes, some characters are stereotyped, but that's because every show has stereotyped characters, because um, that's just the nature of storytelling, right? But then, like, you know, all the martial arts, everything is really thought out, and nothing, nothing is done without care. And I, um, and I have a lot of respect for that, you know. Seeing the different martial arts, karate, kung fu, uh, even like some of the Asian characters in in knowing that like it's a fantasy show so like they can't use exactly you know Japanese calligraphy or like Chinese and they do a pretty good job of of um, mixing all the different Asian influences together um, even even South Asians like I was surprised to see the we just watched the episode last night with the the guru the airbending guru and I was like oh wow that there's like South Asian representation too and I, I remember hearing some some Filipino accents or like Pacific Islander accents in there. It's like oh wow like this is deep for a cartoon. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely a uh, a bandwagoner, a hey, Kevin Garcia's here. What's up, Kevin? Yeah, the creators definitely did their homework, and then like you know even. Um, Looking at the credit list, like there is actually quite a bit of uh, of Asian representation behind the camera. So like 
a lot of the animators are Korean and whatnot. I think the show might have been animated in Korea. Um, it's actually kind of funny because um, for for some reason I know this, but like SpongeBob, a lot of animators are Korean for SpongeBob, which is which is kind of funny. So yeah, I do enjoy the show now as an adult. And all the good things I've said about the show, um, I feel the exact opposite about the movie. I feel the exact opposite about the movie. M. Night Shyamalan. Man. All you had to do... Like, it was made... It was... Just copy one episode. Just, like, straight up, straight up. Like, all you had to do was literally copy and paste. Like, you had permission. Like, could you imagine being in, like, school and, like, okay, this is my final essay paper. All I have to do is copy and paste. And I'll get 100%. Uh, no, I'm going to make it my own. Right? Just freaking, like, everything that was there before. I'm just going to fuck it up. It's like, yeah, it's failing an open book test. Thank you, Jessica. God. So much was wrong with that movie. And I don't even think he, like, fully, like, apologized. Like, dude, like, at least say you're sorry. And admit, admit that you were just, like, oh, God. So hopefully the, the new adaptation is better. I almost feel like they should just make it into a live action show like Game of Thrones. That'd be sick. How come Jessica didn't join the live stream? Jessica didn't join the live stream because she doesn't know how to use a screwdriver. No, just kidding. She, she's uh, playing her Switch. So there's the female end. This is stinger number four. Oh, it's a live action Netflix series? Is it is it movies or is it a show? Because M Night M Night was supposed to have a trilogy. Oh god. I'm glad they stopped him. Brandon Suhu as Zuko. They better do it soon if they want him as Zuko. He's got the exact voice. He's got the same voice as, as Dante Bosco. It's, it's crazy. Hearing them in the same room, it's like, what? Brandon should just play all of Dante Bosco's previous roles, like Rufio. Just have Brandon play Rufio. But Yoshi, even Yoshi had like a really good uh, Zuko video. Zuki, Zu, um, Yoshi's got a, that similar type of voice too. Like it's kind of like a raspier voice. Okay, female and done on this one. Oh, we've already hit an hour and ten minutes. Let's see, I should, I'm just gonna keep going. I haven't been this productive in a while. Okay. I haven't talked this much in a while too. I don't I don't talk a lot normally. So I think that drives Jessica insane because she's a talker. What? Worst part 
about losing their job. Oh, yeah. She says, the worst part of losing her job is she has nobody to talk to. Because I don't really talk much. Have I watched any Korean dramas or any Asian dramas? Um, I haven't watched any Asian dramas. Um, I just don't... I don't watch a lot of things. I, wa I, I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch a lot of on online content. Um, I tend to gravitate more towards things that like are educational or that I can learn from. Um, so I don't... Yeah, there's no... I haven't watched a Korean drama. I have watched like Korean movies that are dramatic. Um, I mean, just but Jessica likes Korean dramas... She's watching this one with the guy from Train to Busan. Which one is it? Goblin. Goblin? I think it's called Goblin. It's on Netflix? No. Where's that? I'm watching on Viki. On Viki? I'm watching Father is Strange. Too. Father is Strange. That's another one she's watching. Um, but yeah. But like I said, you know, I don't read, so I can't read subtitles. Parasite was great, though. Maybe I should have just had the camera pointed at my lap since I'm just doing this all on my lap. But then you guys would see that I'm not wearing pants. And then I would have to do this live stream on a different website. Dustin asks, are you still practicing jiu-jitsu while in quarantine? Um, I was a little bit. Um, I, I was able to convince Jessica to be my training partner a couple of times. Um, and then uh, she got a little bit too good. So it always sucks getting beat up. So I just I stopped that real quick. Taught her how to do an arm bar. And she's just a little too excited about those arm bars. So, you know what? This is getting dangerous. You don't understand the power that you have and how easy it is to hurt to hurt somebody with that knowledge. But, uh, um, yeah, I think right now I'm just trying to work on my conditioning, I'm trying to get back to jogging, um, and just general strength and flexibility. I think that's um, my focus right now. But I really do want to start training again. I think um, a lot of the jujitsu community, it, it's kind of in turmoil. You know, people want to open, but people want to be safe and. Just gyms in general, because like there there are those arguments that like yeah your immune system ways to boost your immune system is by exercise right, but it's like at a gym that's where you're in contact with the most kind of grime and like I, I wonder what the statistics are of like how many people just get sick normally going after going to the gym that'd be interesting. Study. Well, it's like if everybody just has, it's it's so simple. If everybody just has good hygiene, it wouldn't be a problem. Wash your hands. Don't go to the gym if you're sick. Another successful stinger. Number four, right? Number four. Cool. Are you going to do a film on coronavirus? Um, 
No, I don't think that we are. We have some that are like that involve some of the themes like um, quarantine or isolation or whatever. So like the our most recent short, you know, was inspired by working from home or not working from home, but like social distancing. The stop sharing my login video. So that was a that was one that we were able to make. I do have an idea that is going to be workshopped. Um, that hopefully will get made. I think it's I think it's pretty funny. I think it's a good one. Uh, I can't share it with you yet because I want you guys to see it. I don't want to ruin it with uh, my pitch. I'm not very good at pitching, but I have a pretty funny idea. I think that um, will be a very good video. Inspired by a recent lunch break about quarantine dating, um, or like relationships during quarantine. Yeah, a tricky thing about doing any videos related to coronavirus right now is that like they're also uh, just like not monetizable. Like YouTube is flagging all of them, just to, just to kind of help keep tabs on like misinformation and stuff. So like we're trying to stay away from doing too much commentary on it right now because one, we're not we're not journalists, we're not a news source. And like we don't want to be like accused of like politicizing or anything. Like we we try to stay pretty safe um, for those kinds of things. So if there was going to be one, we'd ha we'd have to be pretty careful. And like we we do get a lot of criticism for for playing it safe, but it's like it's one of those things where. You gotta know your audience. You gotta know kind of where you fit in the puzzle. You know, are you Nickelodeon? Are you MTV? Are you uh, Disney? Right? And um, you know, we know our audience very well. We know what they want. We know it. Uh, and like we as people making what we want. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of content about coronavirus in the future. Um, there already is, you know, a lot of people have been making comedies, shorts. So it'll be interesting to see what, what other people do too and just be kind of like a viewer.
Oops. Oops. I think I'm going to start wrapping out of this live stream, everybody. Um, I do want to thank everybody that has come through and said hello and has asked me questions. I'm on my last stinger that I'll be working on, at least tonight. Um, but thank you for all the questions. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the conversation. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well during this time. And everybody's kind of finding their ways to stay active, stay healthy, stay sane. Um, what else is there? Any lasting thoughts? Um, yeah. Thanks for your continued support on this channel, on Wong Fu, on social media, Instagram and all that jazz. Um, I always I always say I'm going to try to post, post more often, and then I st don't post. Um, but I'm not going to make any empty promises. I'm, I'm going to try. I need to get a haircut. That's what I need. I need to get a haircut. Um and take more pictures post more pictures post more stories maybe i'll just do one of those instagram days where i just like wear like 10 different outfits and does have 10 different posts work out with 10 different outfits have 10 different workout videos you guys would never know just work out for 30 minutes three minute three minutes in each outfit you guys would be like man benson works out so much Dang. Okay. Last side. Coming up on an hour 30. This is like a movie. Maybe I'll just submit this to some film festivals. And just see what happens. Nobody's really making movies right now. Maybe I can just... Submit this. Hey Netflix, you wanna... Just show my live stream? Anybody here work for Netflix? Or like Sundance? Or Os the Oscars. Maybe I'll settle for South by Southwest. I'll give you all the rights. Speaking of rights, John Krasinski selling some good news to CBS. That's a discussion topic.
Okay. Almost done with this guy. Do you think you and Jessica will do a live stream together again? Of course, yeah. We we do want to do more um, just gaming live streams and, and Q and A's. Um, I have been meaning to post our 23andMe like results. I think I kind of want to reshoot that because we did that kind of like like a live stream where we're just kind of talking to camera. But I kind of want to do it a little differently. So we might we might reshoot that video. But we'll see. But um, yes, she will be on this channel again and on Twitch. If you guys are on Twitch, follow me at Twitch Benson Q. The final test of this number five. Let's hope this was done correctly. And it was two lights. This is correct wiring. Done. Okay. So I've made four 25 foot stingers and one 50 foot. And I got a couple other things to make, but I will do that offline. Okay. This. Alrighty. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to end the stream and grab a beverage. All right. Bye guys.